Hey folks, welcome to another Triple T Thursday. For those just joining us, that's tools, tips, and talk where we'll discuss info for the knife maker. In today's episode, we're going to continue our beginner series with an introduction to knife steels. Knife Steels 101. Okay, let's get right into it. Today we're going to answer these three questions. Why can't I just buy steel from Home Depot? What are all these crazy numbers and designations mean? And finally, known versus mystery steel, and why you want one versus the other. Most steel that you find will be considered mild steel. That means it has less than 0.5% carbon. We need the carbon because that's what's going to allow us to harden the steel. Hardened steel started with the production of bloom steel. And that's where you take a big furnace, you put a bunch of iron in it, and you have alternating layers of this iron and then charcoal. And that will infuse the carbon into the steel. Today, modern steels are done in more of a factory in crucibles where the steels are just combined at high heat. This produces a much more consistent product. You hear this all the time for beginners. What is the best steel? Well, there is no best steel. Every steel has a different purpose and its chemical makeup is made to suit that purpose. So how do we compare knife steels? Really, it's these two things, hardness and toughness. A really hard blade will allow you to put a really keen, thin edge on it. A tough blade will allow it to keep that edge, and you won't have to sharpen it as much. There's also a factor of stain resistance, and that really comes more into play with the stainless steels. 1080, 5160, all these numbers can be so daunting for the new knife maker. How do you know what steels to use? What is the difference? This is what we're going to talk about now. Each steel has a different chemical composition, but I'll also go into what is the normal use for that steel and where would you normally see it. And finally, how to heat treat it and how you would use it in a knife. The 10X steels, 1080, 1084, 1095, those are the ones you're most commonly going to see, especially here in the United States. The last two digits represents the amount of carbon in it, so it's really simple. 1080 means 0.80% carbon. 1095 and the higher carbon 10X steels are used a lot for files, rasps, those kind of things. Great overall knife steel, very hard, retains a very keen edge. These are also the most common steels used in Damascus. These steels require a fast quenchant for heat treating. Typically you want Parks 50 or something very fast. I don't ever recommend water, but you can heat treat these with water. Again, not recommended. Also, Canola oil is not recommended for these steels. It is not fast enough. 1080 is an excellent beginner steel along with 1084. Though I don't recommend 1095 as a beginner steel, it requires a soak time and that's very difficult in a forge. You really need a heat treating oven for 1095. 15 and 20 is really just 1080 with 2% nickel added. You'll see this steel used primarily for things like bandsaw blades. The added nickel adds some stain resistance this is also a really good choice for chef knives because of the stain resistance. The heat treat for 15 and 20 is identical to 1080. You need Parks 50 or some very fast quenchant. This is also why it's a good pairing for 1080 for Damascus, because they have the same heat treatment. 80 CRV2 is another variant of 1080. They add chromium and vanadium, hence CR and V in the title. Adding 2% vanadium adds toughness to this steel. You may see this steel referred to as 1080 plus. New Jersey Steel Baron still refers to it as 1080 plus. This is a great overall knife steel. It does produce a lot of decarb on the surface after the heat treat, which you need to grind away. If you don't, you will not get proper hardness of the surface. The heat treat is a medium fast quenchant. Uh, ideal one is Parks AAA. 5160, I'm starting to consider the best beginner knife steel. And I'll tell you why. This one, it's readily available as spring steel. Leaf springs are typically 5160, so it's easy to acquire. The heat treat for this is also very simple. It is one of the steels you can heat treat successfully with canola oil. But Parks AAA is even better. One important aspect of 5160 is that because of the added chromium, it does not like to forge weld to itself. So keep that in mind if you're trying to do that. 52100 is another great steel. It's got pretty high carbon content, but a lot of chromium in it. It's used mainly for ball bearings, uh, and it doesn't deform very well, and it's very tough. When working this steel, you need to keep it really hot, or else you'll get stress cracks in it. 
The heat treat on this one is pretty simple as well, a medium fast quenchant like Parks AAA. The W series steels, W1 and W2, the W stands for water quenching, but use that with caution. When we're talking about heat treating knives, they're typically very thin, thinner than the application when W1 and W2 are typically used. So I don't advise you water quench these. Using a fast quenchant like Parks 50 is what you want. The common use for these steels is drill rod, so you'll typically get these in rod form. Because they require a fast quenchant, they're known to produce good hormone lines. O1 is another tool steel, similar to the water quenching steels, but this time the O stands for oil quenching. O1 is known for its toughness, typically used in tools, things like planer blades, and things that are going to take a lot of abuse. The heat treat for O1 is a medium quench oil like Parks AAA or even canola. Here's a full chart with the chemical comparison of the different steels. And these vary from maker to maker, so sometimes there's some variability here. Of course, we haven't included iron, which makes up the vast majority of the elemental composition here. I've included the most common high carbon steels here. I have not included stainless steels or any of the more complex steels. So these are the ones for beginners you're normally going to encounter. So now we're going to answer that last question, known versus reclaimed steel. The problem with reclaimed steel is you never know exactly what's in it. Even leaf springs that everyone assumes is 5160 are not always 5160, or not the same composition of 5160. Generally, your time is worth more than the cost of the steel. I give an example here, an 8th inch by 1.5 inch by 36 inch piece of 1080 or 1095 is $17. You know, you can make three knives out of that. Why risk it? get yourself known steel. It removes an element of uncertainty in finishing your first couple of knives when it comes to the heat treat. Lastly, I've included all my heat treating recipes for these steels. I highly recommend you go watch my heat treating video, which explains the whole heat treating process. I'll put a link up here in the corner. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll let you guys pause on each of these recipes and check them out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.